this is Mr. Coates, and this is Apes Lecture number 37, The Introduction to Air Pollution. Uh, whenever we're out and about, we're always breathing the atmosphere. We don't really think about what's in it. Obviously, we know that nitrogen, oxygen are in it, and some CO2, and there's some other gases in there, but we don't think about all the other stuff we can't see, and that's why we don't think about it, because we just don't see it. But it's out there, and we are producing it all the time, and there are natural sources as well. But these particles get in the air and we breathe them without knowing it. And these can cause some serious health effects if we're not aware of them. So we're going to talk a little bit about air pollution. We're going to get into the causes of air pollution. We're going to get into both indoor and outdoor air pollution. And we're going to talk about ways to possibly clean up that air pollution. Down here I have a picture of a local power plant. And whenever you think about air pollution, most people think about a power plant and all this junk that's coming out of the smokestacks here. But one of the things about power plants, especially here in the United States, is that they have really cleaned up their act. Most of this stuff that you see, this white stuff here, is steam. It's not hazardous to your health at all. This steam is not. It's this brown stuff that comes out afterwards here. That's the stuff we're really worried about. And this could be SO2. It could have some mercury in it. could have uh, CO2, CO, all kinds of different things. But power plants in the United States have really done a good job cleaning up their act. And so you don't get as much of this stuff in the atmosphere as you do like in other countries because they have these scrubbers that are down here that really help clean up a lot of these gases that come out of the power plants. So a majority of the air pollution here in the United States is not necessarily from power plants and from smokestacks. It's mainly from automobiles. Automobiles actually put out more pollution in the United States than just about anything. First of all, we want to review atmosphere. Back when we talked about climate, we looked at the atmosphere and we said that there are several layers to the atmosphere. We have the exosphere, we have the thermosphere, the mesosphere, and then the two important layers that we really want to concentrate on, the stratosphere. And remember, the stratosphere has that ozone layer in it that protects us from harmful UV radiation. And part of air pollution uh, actually does degrade that ozone layer. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then, of course, the important layer in which we live in and which all of our air pollution accumulates in is the troposphere. I realize that this is the most dense layer down here. It has the most mass to it. And as we move up, we get less and less mass because there are fewer and fewer particles. Now, when we talk about air pollution, there are going to be different types of pollutants. So the first type is going to be primary pollutant. A primary pollutant is the type of pollutant, which is this group right here, that gets emitted directly to the atmosphere, either from a smokestack or from a tailpipe or even from natural sources like volcanic activity. So these things are like SO2, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, and uh, some hydrocarbons, and then also those suspended particles. And uh, sometimes we don't see those particles, but they're out there as well. So these are our primary pollutants. As those primary pollutants mix in with the water in the atmosphere and some other pollutants in the atmosphere, we start getting these secondary pollutants. Secondary pollutants include nitric acid, sulfuric acid, ozone, hydrogen peroxide, um, pans, uh, para, they're paracetyl nitrates, what they are. And so these are secondary pollutants, and usually secondary pollutants are larger molecules. You can see there's more atoms for these molecules than there are this, these primary ones. Now also when we talk about air pollution, we're going to talk about indoor pollution versus outdoor pollution. A lot of people think that the outdoor air pollution is worse, and in fact that is wrong. Indoor air pollution in the world is worse than it is outdoors, uh, thanks to a lot of the cleaning up of of the air, especially in developed countries with uh, certain laws and regulations, the outdoor air quality has really improved. However, the indoor air quality is not. A lot of people lack proper filtration, po proper ventilation inside their buildings, and consequently there's quite a lot of problems, especially in developing countries. We look over here at this picture, there's a, a woman that's actually cooking inside her hut or her house and she's burning some kind of biomass here and it puts out a lot of smoke and she doesn't have a chimney she doesn't have any way except maybe a hole in the roof for all of this smoke and these particulates to get out of her house and she's breathing this all the time constantly and this is a huge problem in developing countries that use biomass for cooking all the time uh, so other things that can happen we can get bacteria parasites there's other chemicals out there problems uh, with pesticides. Uh, we don't often see that too much indoors, but there are some indoor pesticides that are used, and so those can all be problems. And so we're going to look at some of the differences between 
uh, indoor versus outdoor pollutants. One of the important aspects of this, though, is to remember is that people in poverty areas typically have bigger problems with indoor pollution than uh, people that live in developed countries. So what are these major outdoor pollutants we're looking to really look at? Carbon monoxide, this is put out by a lot of automobiles, a lot of transportation puts out carbon monoxide, CO. This is highly poisonous. It can kill you, but when you breathe in carbon monoxide, it replaces the oxygen in your blood, and your cells can't use carbon monoxide, and this causes your cells to die, and a lot of people every year die because of carbon monoxide exposure. Uh, nitrogen dioxide, well, we've already talked about this, Nit uh, nitrate, is an, or trite, I'm sorry, nitrite is another name for this. Uh, this gets up in the atmosphere and can combine with other things and, and cause acid deposition. Same thing with sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is created a lot when we burn fossil fuels, and this can mix with the water in the atmosphere, causing sulfuric acid. I mentioned those particulates, so suspended particulate matter, uh, dust, soot from coal burning, uh, pollen. These are all uh, issues of particulates out in the atmosphere. Ozone. We said ozone is very beneficial in the stratosphere. However, ozone in the troposphere is actually a pollutant. And this is because ozone is a strong oxidizer. And whenever you breathe in ozone particles, it actually breaks down part of your lungs. It's a very strong oxidizer. This oxygen breaks down other chemicals or other compounds, including tissues. So ozone is uh, pretty bad. Uh, if you've ever had like uh, rubber bands laying around your house for quite a long time and then all of a sudden you go to use one and it just kind of falls apart, it's really gooey almost. And this is because ozone has gotten to that rubber band and degraded the rubber to the point where the rubber no longer has its same physical properties. So ozone's all around us, although we just don't see it, and it's a huge uh, pollution problem. And then another one is lead. Now, we get most of our lead in this country in the atmosphere from burning of coal. However, in the past, most of our lead came from our automobiles. So, as I mentioned, lead was a huge problem uh, in the past for the United States. It was mostly due because gasoline used to contain lead. A lot of the motors were built to have lead uh, fuel added to them, and uh, this lead was some kind of benefit to the gasoline and the engines at that point. And whenever the gasoline was burnt, lead was released into the atmosphere. And, uh, thankfully, lead doesn't stay in the atmosphere very long. It falls out pretty fast. But if you go to any major interstate in the United States that's been around for 50, 60 years, and you sample the soil around it, you're going to find uh, higher lead levels than you would away from that highway. And that's because of all the leaded gasoline that was burned. Uh, thankfully now you can only buy unleaded gasoline in the United States. We did away with that lead. We realized lead was a neurotoxin, causes a lot of birth defects. We got rid of that lead and we no longer use it in our gasoline here in the United States. If you look at this map, however, we do have some large problems with lead deposition in these areas. And it's mostly due to the burning of coal for power. Uh, this lead then deposits or it gets in the air and people breathe it in. And so the highest concentrations near, usually are those areas where heavy coal use is. And uh, so you can see that. Thankfully in Florida we have a uh, few coal burning power plants here in Florida. And so our uh, lead deposition is very low. Now, one of the ways that scientists look for air pollution is looking at some of the organisms. We mentioned indicator species in the past, and one of the best indicator species of air pollution is lichens. Remember, lichens are a symbiotic uh, relationship between a, an algae and a fungus. And they get most of their nutrients from the atmosphere. Whenever it rains, certain nutrients in the rain they absorb, but they also will directly take nutrients out of the atmosphere. And when the atmosphere becomes overly polluted, then the lichens start to die and suffer. And so we can use lichens as indicator species for air pollution. If your area has quite a, a good population of lichens, then chances are your air quality is probably pretty good. However, if you uh, notice the lichens are disappearing, then chances are you might have a problem with air quality. Well, I hope that gives you a good introduction to uh, air pollution. And uh, we're going to get into the details in the next couple of lectures. If you have any questions, please bring them to class.